this is Marion Kloniger. And with my artwork, there, part of the process I use is putting on a coat of self-leveling clear gel. And that is made by Golden. And this is a wonderful gel, but I can tell you it took me a while to learn how to use it. And I've heard so many people come up to me and say, how do you get that glossy finish? Just, just how do you get it? Well, today I'm going to show you how I get it. This is a piece of artwork that I have finished. And an important thing uh, to know before you put on the self-leveling clear gel is you got your artwork. And I have it set up on some little things to keep it off the table. Get a little level and put your level down. And you want to make sure you get it as level as you can on your table. Because you know what's going to happen if you don't? It is called self-leveling clear gel for a reason. It will spread out, and if it's not level, it's going to go right off the edge of your painting. So we want to avoid that. So before you put this on, you need this. This is a soft gel semi-gloss, which I love. Again, made by Golden. I use this, several coats of this, when I'm doing a collage in between uh, layers of collaging, and then I'll do two, two or three coats just to kind of put the collage elements back in the painting. So I don't use this full strength though. Now you can use a full strength if you've got a really heavy piece of something that you want to collage, uh, then that will work just fine. But otherwise, I mix it with water. And I make it about oh, the consistency of skim milk, or maybe just a little bit more. And I keep my old containers, and I'll just, when I get a new one, I'll just scoop it out, put it some in the old containers, mix water until the consistency I like. And then I have my container that I can just pull and grab any time that I want it. So it's really important to have an isolation coat on your painting of this. Mixed with water, remember to dilute it. It's good for gluing your collage elements down as well. This is, this is the thing I use through my entire painting. Okay, so we've had, we've had our isolation coat and it has dried. And you want to make sure everything is good and dry. Now, you want to do this in an area that is pretty free of dust. I mean, I'm not a fanatic about keeping my house dust free, but pretty free of dust and away from any animals because you do not want your cat or your dog fur in this, although it might make interesting texture. But having said that, we've got our painting ready. We've got our self-leveling clear gel, and I've got this little thing that I'm going to put it on with. And I'm just going to pour a little bit on there, and that would be good to start with. And this, again, is one of those Catalyst products, and I really like it. You can see the clear gel has kind of a milky consistency, and you're thinking, how's that going to dry clear? But believe me, it does. It dries beautifully clear. It takes two or three days, depending on how much you put on here. But it really does not take a very, uh, very thick uh, coat at all. And as a matter of fact, if you do a really thick coat, it might crack. So you don't want that. So now we just spread this out very carefully. We don't want to get too aggressive with our spreading because, you know, with this stuff you can get bubbles. So you got to be careful. So you see how that's spreading out? You see the shininess of it? And it's going to come off the edge, but that's okay. Keep that little area right there we didn't get. Now we got it. Let's put a little bit more on here. Okay, so let's just spread this all around. It's sort of like frosting a cake. Lovely. I think we've got it covered now. That looks really good. All right. Make sure that's all the edges are covered well. Okay. So now that I got that done. I'm going to go around here and pull these drips off the edges. And that's nice about what you can do with the edge of this tool. Just pull those drips off. Because if they dry on there, they're going to leave hard drips. And you might not like that look. I know I don't. So we'll just pull that off. Now, when this dries, I'm going to go back and put another coat of gesso around the edges. 
because it will leave a little shiny look on the edges where I pulled all these drips off. So I always put another coat of gesso on. I always edge my paintings in black gesso. Some people like the thought of doing them in the same colors, but you're going to run into trouble if you've got to put an extra coat on if you do that. So we're getting all this edging off. See how easy that comes off? A little bit more over here. Well, there is one more thing that you have to do, and this is extremely important. I keep alcohol in a little spritzer bottle like this, and you have to spritz your painting with the alcohol to cut the bubbles. Now, I have found this gets rid of most of the bubbles, but maybe not all of them. But when you hold the painting up to hang it on the wall, you're not going to see the bubbles. You might see it when you hold it down in front of you, but when it's on the wall, you're not going to see it. And I look at it as just a little more texture in the painting, because you get rid of most of them this way. So you're going to hold it up a fair distance from the painting, and you're going to start spritzing. And I make sure it's spritzed good all the way. That's good. And that is what you do. And then again, like I said, you're going to want it to dry two or three days, depending uh, on the humidity and the, the weather that there is outside. Um, if you, you want to try and keep your temperature as stable as possible while it's drying. So don't leave a window open in the bedroom and, and expect it to dry without maybe cracking a little bit. Just make sure your temperature stays stable. One thing I have found that helps a whole lot is to take my dehumidifier and park it in the hallway outside my studio. And it just kind of draws the humidity out of the air. And this dries a whole lot faster. And so, and it looks a whole lot better too. So, and then what do you do after this? Well, some people let this be their final step. And they don't do anything else. This actually has protectants in it uh, for the UV lights coming in through your window. And so it's not going to let the color fade in your painting, which is a great thing. Um, and so some people stop here and they let this be their final coat. I do not. I go one step further, and that is um, I get Renaissance wax, and I get that from Amazon. And I learned about this through another um, art rep who told me that a lot of people were not liking using varnish. Now, if you like varnish, that can go on top of this, no problem at all. But if you don't like varnish, I had trouble with it. I, I just had a real hard time learning how to use it. So I went and got the um, Renaissance Wax, and it tells you on the, on the jar how to use it, but you use it very sparingly, and you rub it all over your painting, and it dries instantly, and then you buff your painting with another clean cotton cloth. And then it's finished. And what the, what the uh, Renaissance Wax uh, does is it adds an extra layer of protection on your painting. It makes it virtually waterproof, makes it fingerprint proof. And it just, all you have to do is dust it with a dry cloth once in a while. And that's all you have to do for it. So I like that little extra bit of protection. And so that is how you use this product. And I hope that you will try it on some things that aren't important to you um, before you actually do it on an important painting because it does take a little while to get used to, but once you get a hold of it and you get it, you'll do great with it and you'll love this beautiful, thick, glossy finish.